This conference will now be recorded. All right. Well, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Deathside Chats. Um, today's a very special episode where we've got um, some new uh, features that have been rolling out this quarter in RegPack, um, specifically a lot of controls around products and uh, payments. So um, to help us out with these next couple of sessions, we're going to have some special guests. Uh, and today we have Tasha, who's the head of our payments team. Uh, we're going to be talking about the uh, new subscription options in RegPack, ways to use them, how to set them up, um, and anything else that you have questions about when it comes to um, subscription options. I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen just to introduce um, this uh, topic here. Uh, we have had the subscription tool out for quite a while. Um, We've been testing it on our side uh, for a lot, um, and we did initially have a, a template uh, that was uh, open to, to, to use just for specifically donations, another subscription type. Um, now that it is more widely available, you can create your own subscription products and uh, you know, control the different types of subscriptions that you're offering within a project. Uh, we have a couple other templates and more um, you know, helpful uh, help articles about the, the controls today uh, to help go into some of the details. I'm going to be walking through a, another RegPack recipe uh, sp focused on memberships, another uh, great use case for uh, the um, subscription tool. So. Um, yeah, first, what the subscription tool is, is basically it's just a product type, uh, and it can you know, continue to add at a frequency that you set, and as well as there's different renewal options, which we'll go into. But basically, it's that idea that there's a frequency. Um, it keeps adding just like uh, you know, uh, other subscriptions. So there's uh, plenty of different use cases for that, memberships being one of that that we'll go into a little bit today. Um, but again, donations is a great use case for when you do want people to have the option to make a like a monthly donation or an annual donation, that type of thing, um, as well as other types of subscription like client billing, that sorts of things that you can also use um, uh, for in this product type. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get into this recipe about um, memberships. So this is going to be following a template that we currently have available for you to use in RegPack. I'll show you what it looks like. It's just a uh, individual membership template, membership USD is the template I'm going to be walking through today. Um, once you get that project created, the next step is just going into straight into the um, customizing the product options. Uh, the template comes with some basic forms, which of course you'll probably want to customize as well. Um, but we're going to be focused on the uh, different product uh, customization options for subscriptions. So we're going to talk about with the uh, recurring settings, um, the frequency. We'll go into a couple of settings about how you can control the frequency. Then we'll talk about the renewals, when it should add, when it should stop the subscriptions. And then we'll go into some of the options that you have about auto charging. So whether it charges automatically um, you know, on the day or the day after it's due, um, as well as there's uh, controls there you have about a grace period if it's re-adding that subscription when it needs to be paid um, for it to still be a valid subscription. Um, and then also we'll talk a little bit about the upgrade downgrade tool, which is um, you know, how you can control if there's different uh, subscription levels under the same uh, category or for memberships, like a membership type, if there's tiers of memberships or something like that. Um, so donation options is a part of this recipe. Um, so if you have memberships and you're collecting donations, you can definitely add in other uh, subscription products to, to do donations in different categories. Um, and then that's where we'll probably uh, cap it off for today. If we have time, we can go into other details. The recipe from there just basically says to personalize the project. You can have these emails sent out to when it's charged each, each instance of the subscription. Uh, your applicants are getting notified um, you know, each time that payment goes through. Um, and then, of course, adding it to your website and going live. So that's the recipe in a nutshell. Let's dive straight into what it looks like and what some of these controls are now. Um, by the way, if anybody does have questions, you can feel free to chat the organizers. Tosh and I can either take them as we go, or if there's something we can address at the end, we'll definitely do that. Um, feel free to also just jump in if you have questions. Um, we'll make sure to have time at the end to go into those as well. But um, feel free to chat them throughout uh, if there's something we can address or go into detail as we're showing this. So uh, 
now I'm in uh, this project here. This is, again, I just, all I did was to get to this project, I, I created from a template, went to project settings, create new project, and then I selected the membership. And then from here, uh, there is a membership USD product type. So scroll down, membership USD. That's from the individual um, uh, project type. This can this tool can be used um, on uh, a group project as well. It does not have to be just an individual type project. So if you have a like family membership, so a use case would be like if the memberships are by child, but you're registering as a family, uh, you can also have uh, subscription prod products as a child type of subscription, child membership, that type of thing. Um, but for today, we'll just talk about this in an individual uh, structure. That's where the template is. Um, so now, and the project, like I said, the forms are very basic here. I'll walk through an example of what it looks like on the front end when it comes to the membership selection and then when they confirm what that looks like. But essentially, all you're seeing here is just that initial intake form. Uh, they get their options and they you know, proceed through the registration, confirm, and checkout. Um, of course, you can add more, um, but for the purpose of this template, that's what we're working with initially. Um, now let's jump straight into the products. So here we've got uh, the template just comes three different membership types. So we've got a monthly membership, annual membership, and two-year membership. So you can see already on the right-hand side, give a sort of preview of what some of these options are going to look like. We've got the recurring um, based on the number of uh, occurrences here. And then we've got the, actually I think I've updated this one here, the default will show monthly and 12 occurrences. And there's gonna be recurring annually. And then there's gonna be every uh, 730 days. That's the different membership types. And then of course the um, quote, the number of uh, orders and prices as, as any other product would be. All right, so talking about the frequency, um, Tasha, if you can help us out here, there's a, a couple of different options, actually a lot of different options with the frequency. What are the main types of options that we're seeing here in terms of when subscriptions are added that frequency? For sure. So our main um, options are you can do daily, you can do weekly, monthly, you can do annually, or a custom amount if you'd like. Okay, cool. Um, and so the custom number of days, um, like uh, I guess the use case here would be for the um, the two year membership, right? Right. Um, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So we've got the so instead of an annual membership re re renewing every year, we've got uh, entered in the number of days there for that to work. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, great. Um, I'm gonna briefly just um, touch on the um, renewal settings while we're here. Um, so we've got two different types of renewal options. If the, I think the default for both of these is gonna be off. You'll see user decides if the product renews, user, uh, allow user to unsubscribe themselves. So the difference here would be if you're in the middle of a subscription, like if this is a monthly, we'll update that. The product is called monthly, let's make it add monthly. There we go. Um, so if they're in a monthly subscription, um, then there would be 12 uh, instances here for the year. Uh, for a year of uh, the membership. Um, so they could unsubscribe before all 12 have been, you know, they've had a, a year in that monthly membership. So that's an option that you can turn on. The default here is off. The renewal is different in that the renewal would happen here based on there are 12 occurrences. So every year it would auto renew and then they've got another uh, year where they're having the monthly membership dues. Um, if you do want to decide if they, whether or not, um, that the user, the applicant, is able to stop their renewal. You can turn that setting on. And then you have here, whether the default is to have that um, auto renew. So they have chosen, they can choose to, to stop the renewal, um, but the default is still that it will renew. Um, or you can turn that setting off where it, they have to each year select that they want to renew their, um, their subscription. So the recommended for that is on, so that way the user doesn't have to, if they already know they're going to renew, um, go back and confirm that. Um, so now when it comes to, oops, when it comes to the um, renewal settings, sorry, we didn't get to the touch on that yet. So the never is, is uh, definitely self-explanatory. Um, that would mean it won't renew. They have to re-add it manually in order for it to renew. 
And then the fixed date, that's also pretty um, obvious. Obviously, you can choose on a product if everybody renews on the same date. So like a use case for that would be uh, talk to people who have a membership that would always renew on the first of the year. Um, or if you have a specific season for your programs, like you want to make sure that the renewal starts when your season starts, um, that's something that you can definitely use that for as well. For the um, occurrences, Tasha, can you talk a little bit more about what that what that does and like a, a use case for that, how that would work? For sure. Um, so in the case of like monthly memberships, this is really helpful if you set it to monthly and then um, the user is being charged monthly. And then they don't even have to think about that plan carrying over to the next year as it'll, the whole plan will continue when they've, they've met 12 occurrences. Okay. For the year. Cool. Yeah. So the, um, whereas um, it's a little different than how auto bill looks, although some of the settings do kind of have an overlap. Um, whereas auto bill, you can have like a certain number of days after the plan is added where something gets charged or some a date happens. This is you already have the number of um, the, the frequency, and then so based on the frequency, how many occurrences. So you technically can control the number of months or days, but you base it off of the frequency and the occurrences. Okay. Um, now, let's just just touch briefly a little bit on the um, auto charging um, since we're right here. Another type of um, control when it comes to the frequency, right? Um, so. Yeah, I guess, Tasha, if you want to just help explain what auto charging is and then maybe a little bit sure. about um, the delay, how that works and, and the grace period. For sure. So um, the auto charge delay, it's basically, so if you turn on auto charge, which is the recommended setting, because it's how we know most subscriptions work is um, you're getting charged. It's like set it and forget it. So with the delay, um, It'll be added to the user's cart and there's like a one day delay, but then the grace period is basically, and you can also set the, the days you want for the auto charge delay. But the grace period is how much time, how much leeway you wanna give your users until um, the subscription is invalid or locked for non-payment. And that's kind of what you can set right here. Okay. Yeah, so the so the, the setting we have here, I think the default is this is one and one, um, but mm -hmm. talking about this beforehand, we talked about how maybe uh, a good good scenario would be you have the product, uh, you know, the subscription adding, and then you have the auto charge um, within that day. Uh, and then if you wanna give a grace period, that way you can see if the auto charge went through, people mm -hmm. still have a day to log in and update their payment method. If you update the grace period to two days, um, uh, after the um, subscriptions added. Okay, cool. Um, and then upgrading, downgrading. Um, so I'll just talk about this really quickly. Um, basically what this does is um, if you have, and we, if, you, if there are more questions about how to leverage this, um, we can go into those, but I'll just sort of explain what this means in the meantime. Um, so a good example here, we've got the membership. There's different types of memberships. Um, based on the, the frequency of the subscription. But another type of membership, of course, that's pretty common is if you have like your basic member, your gold member, your platinum member, and maybe there's different benefits or perks that come with that. So if you do have membership types that are within the um, same category like that, um, uh, and whether there's different prices associated with that, um, you can choose to do the upgrading downgrading tool. Um, there's a bunch of different sort of controls that you have once you do go into those details. But basically that's what it does is if you have the option for people to control what level of membership, what level of subscription they have, then you can give that control to the user on the front end um, as opposed to if they, the way that this is going to be set up um, right here is we, you choose your one membership type and then you're good to go. If you update it, you can do that after the subscription or have um, the admin do that if the um, upgrading downgrading is off. So um, we're actually getting close to uh, time here. We do have a Kahoot uh, really quick, just sort of going through what we talked about and if there's something more that anybody wants to learn more about um, in, that, in that Kahoot. Before we do that, just wanna show a quick example of what it'll look like on the front end. Again, this is a very basic template. I did really not much to customize this at all. Um, so I'm just gonna show the uh, membership type here. Um, I've 
upgraded, uh, just added the basic information on the application. Again, that would be the first form here. And then for the selection, we've got the membership level. So if I select that monthly membership that we were just talking about, um, I go to the next step and submit the form, which would be the terms and conditions. Oops. There we go. Then the next um, option is going to be showing me that confirmed selection, and then it's going to show me all of the subscription details, how long the subscription is valid um, for, and um, when the next instance is going to be added. Um, so this is, I think, still has the daily control on it, which is probably why it's doing that. I probably didn't save that. Um, setting. Um, so this would be something where if it is adding daily, um, it's going to add uh, every day uh, and then the next instance is going to be added daily. Um, if I were to go back and save the settings, um, then it would show the next instance being added um, March uh, 18th would be when it's next added. And the valid until is still the same here. Um, or w w That would also be if we have the 12 instances there. Um, it'll show all of that below here. And then when we proceed to the checkout, that works just the same as any other project that's taking payments. It'll show um, the option to close the balance. We've got the $10 due. Okay. So before we get um, some time for questions, let's go straight into a Kahoot. I'm just going to pause this here as I get that up. Okay, so there we go. And the website, if uh, anybody has or hasn't used Kahoot before, uh, if you're on your phone, there is an app, but you can just go to kahoot.it. And then once you're there, you add in that game pin. So this is um, very short, very interactive uh, quiz just to get people thinking about what we just talked about and hopefully help you sort of solidify what we learned and some of the options that are available. No, no trick questions or grades, I promise. Although we do give out um, prizes uh, at the end of each year for those who uh, have, uh, you know, got the most points in Kahoot. And I think that would be uh, if. If you want, you can join Tasha um, since um, since I'll be controlling this. Um, but uh, yeah, and and uh, we yeah, I got your input on the questions, but the uh, the final the final input is is different. So. There you go. Looks like a couple people dropped, and since we're getting close to the end of our session here, I'll just go ahead and get it started um, without further ado. Okay, so um, a lot of these questions are going to be multi-select, and again, I'll read out the color and the answer options. Um, so yeah, the first one, there are multiple correct answers. What are some of the uses for the subscription product type? So we've got memberships, donations, client billing, and event signups. Okay, okay. Yeah, so um, membership donations. So yeah, the only one that's not an option here is the event signups. Um, there are dates here associated with it, but there's other product options here in RegPack um, where you wouldn't be using the subscription product type for events. Uh, 
Okay, the next question is going to be another multi-select. How frequently can a subscription be added? We've got daily, uh, monthly, annually, and custom. Interesting. Um, it looks like uh, Val, if you're, I, I saw that you signed up, but it, you know, if you're not able to or not not ready to do the um, Kahoot, we can just co go ahead and um, skip this. Um, definitely, Tasha, as part of our payments team, would have a, a leg up on some of these questions. Um, so we can go ahead and wrap it up. Also, um, if that works. Um, works better um uh yeah um yeah let's go ahead and open it up for some questions i think that'll make sense we just got one that came in so let's do that um so one of the questions um is about a message about the collaborators um that collaborators aren't going to be able to see prices uh payment related information asking for some more information about that so uh let's go actually go into if I go back to my project here so currently I am in the system as a uh, super admin um, so in terms of what a collaborator moving forward will and won't be able to see so Collaborators can still, if you, depending on how you're adding products, that can um, like complete registration or view a registration record. What they're not going to be able to do is edit the cart um, and and charge uh, payments on file. So, reasoning behind that is to make sure that there's a, a difference um, in terms of uh, people who are able to talk to the the payments team. So. Currently, that's uh, only super admins and then our new financial admin, which is uh, something we definitely talked about with um, people before, looking for somebody who has sort of that level of access to all the financial details, um, but not necessarily a full super admin. Um, and the uh, collaborator admin is somebody who can sort of just um, be, you know, they they can talk to our support team, but they wouldn't be able to access your organization financial details. So, what they, uh, what you know, people who have already implemented some of these permissions are doing is, um, they have uh, a common use case for this is if they have uh, certain discounts or certain things that are being added based on, um, you know based on something that a collaborator level person where they're not the main person who's in charge of things can add, uh, having that set up via triggers. Um, by default, um, collaborators aren't going to be able to discount something or take a, an amount off of a cart. Um, but if you are, if, if it's if a, if a discount, which is one of the questions here, if they can apply discounts, if that's a part of your normal process, you can build that in um, to your process uh, for them to be added as uh, a triggered product based on, uh, like I guess, what, what we're seeing people do is if they have, um, they have a, um, a product like that where they need it to be added by a collaborator, they have that set up as a triggered discount or a triggered product. Um, so definitely that is a change that is coming out. Um, our team is going to reach out to uh, everybody about that, make sure that there's more clarity on that up and coming. Um, and you know, as, as more questions come out, definitely um, talk about that as well. Um, we are close to the end of our time here. Um, I can definitely, um, you know, otherwise, we'll, we'll be able to share what that'll look like. Um, also, that is something that you can currently add that permission on your current admin. So you can always sort of see from before that's the default for collaborators what that looks like. Um, but again, we've got the collaborator um, controls as well as the financial admin, which is something that uh, definitely going to be very helpful and has been asked about for a lot of folks is if there's somebody who doesn't necessarily need to build out registration, but they really need all that financial details. Um, it's been asked about multiple times and stuff, something that we're 
uh, excited that is available now. Okay. Well, great. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and um, close that off now then. Um, Tasha, thanks again so much for joining for this session. Um, of course. Very excited to have you on. Uh, we'll go yeah. ahead and um, we'll, we'll, we'll have the recording without the, um, the Kahoot, so it's nice and brief for everybody afterwards. Go ahead.